Today, I'm going to explain the American science fiction film called Voyagers. Watch out for spoilers ahead. The movie starts in the year 2063 AD. Human existence is at risk of extinction because of climate change, decreasing biodiversity, and decreasing supply of clean drinking water. At the beginning of the movie, the top scientists and astronomers of the world are in a conference meeting. They have finally found an Earth-like exoplanet far away in the galaxy and discuss how they can colonize it. An astrophysicist who is presenting the idea says that they will have to leave for the exoplanet as soon as possible because the voyage will take 86 years. Thus, the crew will have to reproduce on board and only the third generation of humans who board the ship will make it to the exoplanet. The scientists' first problem is to find 30 qualified crew members who are willing to leave everyone they know on Earth to spend the rest of their lives on a spaceship. Moreover, they have to ensure that no one feels the stress of prolonged confinement because then they would want to return to the Earth. The only solution to this problem is to breed their own crew members and train them in isolation. That way, the crew members wouldn't know how the Earth was and wouldn't feel nostalgic. So the scientists use bioengineering to give birth to 30 babies who will, in the future, initiate 86 years long voyage to the exoplanet. The kids are raised and reigned by a scientist named Richard Ayling. Richard treats the kids as his own and, with time, grows attached to them. After a few years, he insists on joining them on their trip to space. His colleague warns that he will never be able to return, but Richard is adamant about the decision. Eventually, when the kids are of a certain age, they fly to outer space, with Richard as their guardian. The ship will be their home for the rest of their lives. Cut to some years later, the kids have grown into youngsters and are perfectly accustomed to their lives in space. They wake up every day at the same time and take educational classes that tell them of their purpose. Then they exercise and do a regular mechanical check. After that, they eat together in the cafeteria. Throughout all this, the crew seems void of human emotions as they do not chat with each other often. An important part of their day is taking a blue liquid after every meal. In the following scene, we see two crew members named Chris and Zach listening to classical music as a recreational activity. Another member named Sela is having doubts about the mission and thinks of her life as unimportant. So she talks to Richard about it. Richard calmly explains that they are the most important humans in history. He reveals he has been feeling lonely for a long time and shows Sela pictures of his family from the Earth. The crew grows its own plant to sustain life for the years they will be on the ship. One day, Chris discovers that there is a toxin named T56J in the water they irrigate the plants with. The water is filtered urine, which means that the toxin is coming from the crew's body. He asks Richard about the toxin, but he simply tells Chris to change the filtration system. Later, Chris does some research on the toxin, but finds no information about it in the database. He even tells Zach about the matter. After everyone is asleep at night, the two hack into the database and find out that the toxin comes from the blue liquid they drink every day. They also reveal that the toxin makes humans docile, eliminates sexual desires, and decreases pleasure response. That means the crew is being drugged so they can be kept in check. From the following day, Zack and Chris stop taking the blue liquid. They also tell two other crew members named Kai and Julie about the discovery. Moreover, Chris has also found an unmarked compartment in the ship behind the walls. The four of them have begun to doubt their creators. During a routine conversation with Richard, Chris tells him that he has discovered an unidentified chamber in the blueprints and demands to know its purpose and what exactly is inside of it. Richard proceeds to evasively tell him that such information is classified and that the chamber is reserved for the third generation on board. The following day, Chris and Zach go through the emotions they have never felt in their lives before. Being off the blue liquid is like being on drugs for them. Zach feels sexually attracted to Scylla and grabs her arm. He lets go of her only after Richard casually tells him to maintain distance. During their workout, Zack and Chris play fight, feeling the rush of adrenaline for the first time. Sometime later, the two are in the hallways where they hear strange noises from the ship's ceiling. They go to the control room and ask crewmate Edward about it. Richard has told them that this is just the noise of the ship's parts contracting, but Edward believes that the noise is caused by some extraterrestrial creature. After a while, Richard holds an emergency meeting informing the crew that they have lost contact with the Earth because of some LCT malfunction. They will have to repair the transmitter from the outside of the ship. Richard asks Zack to join him and assigns everyone their respective roles. As they prepare, Zack starts touching Scylla inappropriately. 
A surprised Richard stops him and asks Ella if she is fine. Zack runs away from them and Richard goes behind him. A girl named Phoebe informs Richard that Zack has stopped taking the blue liquid. Richard then meets Chris, who reveals that he hasn't been taking it either. The two decide to complete the reparation first, then talk about the matter. They get into their spacesuits and go outside. Meanwhile, Kai from the navigation room helps them as the others are in the control room doing the same. Kai is soon joined by Zack. All of a sudden, Richard's suit malfunctions and electrocutes him. At the same time, the whole ship malfunctions, making the crew panic. The systems room catches on fire while every technical difficulty arises at the same time. The crew set the fire out while Chris somehow manages to get Richard inside the ship. They hurriedly take him to the med bay and use a defibrillator on him. However, it doesn't work and Richard dies. Sella, being the chief medical professional, sadly announces him dead. After everything calms down, the crew surrounds Richard's body and discusses what went wrong. Edward says that he saw something dark pull Richard right before his death. He thinks it was an alien. Chris assures everyone that it was outside the ship, so they should be fine. Zack volunteers to be the new chief officer replacing Richard, but everyone else decides they should vote. The voting takes place and eventually Chris is elected as the chief officer. He then orders everyone to repair the damage that was caused to the ship as soon as possible. The crew gets to work and Sela goes to Richard's room to get rid of his belongings as per the protocol. However, she begins to watch pictures and videos of his family and decides to keep them. Christopher joins her and the two watch the video documentary that Richard had made. In the video, he says that he came to the mission because he wanted to protect the kids. The two are confused as to what they need protection from, but little do they know what is about to happen next. A while later, Chris goes to check on the crew's progress and sees no one around. He finds everyone in the plantation area trying to fix the flood storage. Zack had brought them there saying that food should be their first priority and they shouldn't let it go bad. Chris agrees and lets them do what they want. After dinner that day, Kai tells everyone not to drink the blue liquid. The following day, the crew feels various emotions at the same time that they cannot control. Their anger and desires are heightened. Zack and Julie touch each other, feeling attracted to the opposite sex for the first time. Others fight, run around the ship, and ignore all their duties. One day, they get into Richard's room and watch the films in his collection. From those, they find out about violence, guns, and sexual intercourse. Sela finds them in the room and orders them to get out as the chief medical officer. On his way out, Zack threatens Sela, asking her to be careful because Richard isn't there to protect her anymore. Later that day, Chris sees Kai and Julie having intercourse in the exercise room. He also notices Zack looking for Sela and runs to her before he can. He hugs her to show Zack she is already busy. At the same time, Kai finds a guy named Peter and Julie getting close. Enraged with jealousy, he attacks Peter, making him run away. Later, everyone is in the cafeteria when Peter hits Kai with a metal tool to take revenge. Chris and the others separate the fight and schedule an emergency meeting in the control room. In the meeting, Chris puts forward his dissatisfaction regarding the crew's performance, but Zack interrupts him frequently. Edward says that he doesn't want to work in the control room anymore because he thinks it has aliens brought by Richard when he last spacewalked. This scares everyone as they too have been hearing the noises. Taking this opportunity, Zack says that he will save the crew from the aliens and provide them with a lot of food. He also declares that he is forming a separate group from Chris and people on his side can follow him. Half of the crew leaves with Zack while the other half stays with Chris. Chris's group is also worried that the alien might be real, so they go to collect the surveillance footage from the systems room. After they leave, Kai's team arrives there and Kai and he go inside. They act like an alien attacked them in the room to scare their group and keep them submissive. Meanwhile, Chris and the group watch the surveillance footage and find a clip of Zack and Kai deliberately electrocuting Richard. They are beyond surprised when they find that the two killed Richard. The following morning, they are woken up by a knock on the door. Zack and his group are there to invite them for lunch. Chris and the team carefully come to the cafeteria and start to eat. Just then, Zack walks in front of everyone and declares himself the new chief officer. But Chris retaliates and shows everyone the clip of Zack and Kai killing Richard. Everyone gets up in surprise, but to their confusion, Zack admits to killing him. He says that he had seen an alien attached to Richard and had to kill him to kill the alien. He then says that the alien might have attached itself to someone else from the crew. The naive crew believes him and starts suspecting each other. With no evidence, they blame Peter for carrying the alien and beat him to death. 
After that, they collect all the sharp weapons to fight the alien if it is still in the ship. Zack's team is skeptical, but they are afraid to speak against him. Meanwhile, in Chris's team, Sela suggests that they get weapons from the secret compartment that Chris knows about. In the following scene, we see Chris trying to open the secret compartment behind the wall, but he gets the passcode wrong, making an alarm go off. He runs away from the compartment and Zack's team arrives there. They get their hands on the weapons and claim them as their own. Two of Chris's teammates decide to join Zack. Zack asks them for the other's location in turn for taking them in, and they happily tell him where the others are. Now, his team approach Chris, Sela, and Phoebe in the surveillance room. They barge inside and hold Chris hostage. Before they take him away, Phoebe loses her control and yells at everyone to come back to their senses. To everyone's surprise, an annoyed Zack shoots her dead. Knowing that they are next, Chris and Sela run away from the others. They are soon followed by the group. After a while, Zack finds them and chases them into the airlock with a gun in his hand. Now, with no way out, Chris quickly thinks of a plan. He and Sela put on spacesuits and open the hatch. So when Zack barges in, he is pulled into space. He holds on tight to the doorframe and refuses to move, but at last, he is pushed into space. Sela and Chris return to the rest of the group, who have become docile without their leader. The scene changes to some days later when everyone has gone back to normal. After an election, Sela is chosen as the new chief. She keeps a video documentary as Richard did. In the documentary, she reveals that they have decided not to take the blue liquid again, but they will vote on everything so no further conflicts arise. A few weeks after the restoration of democracy and peace, Sela finds out that she is pregnant with Chris's child and eventually gives birth to a boy. Things seem to have changed back to normal and everyone on the ship is happy. For the next few decades, kids run around the ship playing and learning about their duties while the elders take care of them and teach them their true purpose. And finally, after 86 years since the launch, the ship is about to land on the destination planet. The movie ends as the old and the new generation watch them getting closer to their new home. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every week.